Elizabeth Alexander, communications director for the first lady. So Joe Biden's wife, her communications director is the first one named here. Kate Bedingfield is the White House communications director. I know y'all got to understand Roland Martin is sick right now. Roland Martin is sitting at home right now, sick as a dog, is what Roland Martin is. Roland just knew there was going to be a White House press secretary, communications director. He just knew there was going to be something for him. He just knew this job was going to him. He, after all the damn work, that he put in, oh, hell no. Man, look, he knew that he was going to get this. He knew it. At least he thought he knew. He was so sure of the way that this was going to go. He was so certain that he had put in all this work and he had done all this dirt and all this skullduggery and that if he just showed them how dedicated to the task he really was, why it was actually going to work for him. He's been campaigning for one of these positions now for the longest damn time. He's been campaigning forever. And when they finally announced him and everything, he he found out there just wasn't going to be nothing for him. Man, y'all know it's got to be messed up right now to be Roland Martin. Roland was just ready, ready. I mean, he went out and bought a whole bunch of new equipment. I guess that was to threaten the Democrats and let them know, if you don't give me a position and I'm a bang on you for the next four years. But yeah, old Roland. Man, it's, it's rough being him right now. As I have to read off these names, it's rough being Roland. It's rough on him. Next up is Ashley Etienne. Communications director for the vice president. Oh, man. Next up is Corinne Jean-Pierre, principal deputy press secretary. Now, I want you to understand this, okay? See, the principal deputy, principal deputy press secretary Jen Saki is the White House press secretary, the redhead chick. The redhead chick at the bottom is the White House press secretary. That was that job that Roland wanted so damn bad. Put it back on your screen here. The chick down there at the bottom left hand corner of your screen, that's the White House press secretary. The position that Roland thought he was auditioning for for the past eight years. Roland thought that's when he was going for. He was ready for it and it never happened. Next up is Simone Sanders. Now, y'all gotta understand the big positions are gone. The White House communications director? That's the big, that gone. Gone. That's that's the top of the food chain. Gone. The White House press secretary. Gone. The big positions that everybody talks about, those are gone. So what's left for Simone Sanders? Senior advisor and chief spokesperson for the vice president. And then last is uh, Peely Tobar, Deputy White House Communications Director. Do you all realize the black women on this list are serving under everybody else? Do you all understand that? The black women on this list, the couple of them that there are, they are serving under everybody else. They got given the bottom rung positions 
the white women are the White House communications director, White House press secretary, communications director for the vice president. Simone didn't get that. Elizabeth Alexander, the communications, all the director positions. Did you all catch that? All the director positions. Simone Sanders is not communications director for the vice president. She's senior advisor, that Omarosa position. If you all remember Omarosa, senior advisor. Advisor just means best friend and chief spokesperson for the vice president. She's not directing anything. Ashley Etienne is communications director for the vice president. Polly Tobar is the deputy White House communications director. Corrine Jean-Pierre is the principal deputy press secretary. She serves under the press secretary. She's the deputy press secretary. But they know the niggas love titles. They know the niggas love titles. So here you go. You're not, oh no, you're not just deputy press secretary. Why, you are principal deputy press secretary. Boy, when they kick your ass to the curb, they sure do it with gold-plated boots, don't they? When they kick you to the damn curb, they sure do make it look and sound so pretty and so nice, don't they? Don't they just make it sound so cute when they toss you the hell overboard? And they had so many of them lined up. Why, they were just so ready. They were just so ready to show all of us how inclusive it is. Simone Sanders did all that butt kissing, butt dancing, and ass kissing. And all she got for it is a chief spokesperson for the vice president. In other words, the exact same thing that she was doing for Bernie Sanders to the black community, not to people at large. Exact same thing that she was doing for Joe Biden but only for black folk. He didn't even make her in charge of spokesperson for people at large. Now she is chief spokesperson, not for the president. That's the White House press secretary. The White House press secretary is the chief spokesperson for the president. Simone Sanders, after all that work for Joe Biden, is now the chief spokesperson for the vice president. The vice president does what exactly? Can someone remind me again exactly what is it that the vice president does that they require a spokesperson? When was the last time that you heard of the vice president? Can someone tell me who Mike Pence's spokesperson is right now? Not just a downgrade, she got demoted. She did all that work and then they came and gave the position to white women. She did all that work. The supposedly the black boat came in and saved you. And after doing all that work, she got demoted. But then again, I can't really say that she got demoted because she was never eligible for the big positions anyway. They were never going to make her anything significant anyway. She, that was never in the cards. That was never an option available to her. Not now, not ever. I've been saying this since day one. This is all going to come as news to Simone Sanders. But we've been saying this in the black media since day one. All of these step and fetch Negroes who've been hurting themselves and killing themselves and they were going to show Joe Biden that they could 
mobilize the black vote and deliver the black vote. All of them were already in waiting. They they just knew this was their time. They just knew it was their time. They just knew it. Roland just knew any second now his phone was going to ring. Roland just knew it. Simone Sanders just knew that any second now Joe Biden was going to give her the phone call and tell her that because of all of her years of faithful service that he was going to bump her up and that she was going to be White House press secretary. She's going to be communications director or at least press secretary. I mean, y'all got to understand. Y'all got to understand these people have been waiting for this for a while. They've been waiting for this for a while. They've been waiting for a while to be told that they were going to get what they wanted. That's what they've been doing. They've been waiting for a while to get that. They've been waiting for a while for somebody to give them the nod. They've been waiting for a minute. And they just knew it was about to happen. They just knew it. And understand something. I want you to understand. Not only were they out here just doing some things, you got to understand, in the case of Simone Sanders, this woman literally put it all on the line. I'm talking about she was literally risking life and limb. Is what I'm trying to tell you. How many of you remember this? That Simone Sanders wasn't just out there. Simone Sanders was hard body for Joe Biden. How many of y'all remember this? Oh, Simone Sanders was banging on people. She was literally banging on people. I mean, she was wearing the colors. She was getting bruises. She was getting her stripes. Literal. She was literally putting hands on people. Do you understand me? Simone Sanders was literally putting hands on people for Joe Biden. Take a look at Joe Biden's wife up there. Joe Biden's wife ain't doing nothing but holding her hands up. Simone done grabbed somebody. Simone has grabbed them and yanked them. I mean, she done ran up and snatched them all the way up off the block. It, the Secret Service didn't have a chance to do anything. Is what I'm trying to tell you. The Secret Service didn't run up as fast as Simone Sanders did. This chick could have been armed. She could have had a weapon. She could have had a knife. Simone said, damn it all. I'm going in. I've only got one life to give for this White House press secretary job. People, when I tell you these Negroes were so desperate, they were laying it all on the line. Understand, this was the last train leaving. This was the last train leaving. So you got to ask yourselves, I mean, well, what did they get out of it here? All of them were fighting for crumbs is what I'm trying to tell you. They were all out there fighting and scrambling and scrounging like filthy pigs in a hog trough to see who could get not even a cabinet position really. Who could get one of these token 
honorary spokespeople positions. Oh, Roland just knew he was going to ride this for the next 30 years. Roland just knew that if he could get them to give him a White House, that he would be able to go on YouTube or he'd be able to go to TV One and he would be able to market himself as former White House press secretary Roland Martin while he was standing in the mirror wearing that purple duster and his mama's house shoes and his tidy whities standing in front of the mirror like Meteor Man with his fists on his hips. Oh, he just knew it. You know, no, 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 no. White House press secretary. Rolling Martin sound pretty damn good when you think about it. About it. Sound pretty good to me. Show to do. I show them n -n 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 niggas. You gon' m -m 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 mock me. I told you I wasn't b -b 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 black. I'm a m -m 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 man. Oh, he was ready. He was he was practicing. I'm telling you, he was sitting at home practicing. The day that he would march back into CNN. Because if he became White House press secretary, you understand CNN would have had to, CNN been clowning him now for the last four years. He would have had, they would have had to talk to Roland. Oh, Roland just knew he was going to flex on them. They've been ignoring him and clowning him. He just knew they was going to the fool with him. He was going to march up there in that damn corduroy outfit. He was going to try to slick down that, that hair because the pink oil moisturizer and, 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 and the S-curl, the relaxer ain't, ain't, ain't keeping it down like he used to. Oh, he was going to be ready. He was going to be ready. Y'all just p -p -p point me to Jake t -t 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 Tapper. Yeah, let me, 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 me talk t -t 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 to him. Yeah. Who, who the b -b 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 boss now? Who the b -b 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 boss now? He just knew it was coming. And it didn't happen. And all of us could have told him it wasn't going to happen. As a matter of fact, all of us did. Simone Sanders just knew that she was going to be the first black woman to be speaking for a president, never made it that far. Now she's speaking for an Asian who masquerades as black when it is politically convenient. People, this take a good long look at Simone Sanders on your screen right now. Take a good long look. Let me go ahead and blow this up a little bit here for you. Take a good long look at Simone Sanders on here. Take a good long gaze. This is going to be the last damn time you see her. This will be the last time you see Simone Sanders. This will be the last time anybody talks about her. This is it for her. They carved out some bull jive ass token position. Gave it to her. And now they're going to shuffle her off to a broom closet somewhere. Will someone please tell me the last time that you heard a corporation brag about hiring the senior advisor and chief spokesperson for the vice president. You tell me the last... When, did you all even hear this position before Simone Sanders? Did you even hear of a position like that before Simone Sanders? Tell me where she going to be able to use that at. Tell me where that transfers to. But I'll tell you. 
I'll tell you the way that this works. For those of you who are unaware of how this works, let me explain to you the way in which this works. The way in which this works is simple. For those of you who have worked at a small or mid-sized company, just understand that, and this is really cynical of them to do this. It's really cynical, but it's, it's diabolically brilliant because people do it all the time. Let me explain to you all the way this works. There is a saying in office politics particularly a company that's owned by a man, if you want to make sure that your secretary never asks for a raise, all you have to do is hire a younger female assistant under her. And she will never ask for a raise. Her time every day will be consumed attempting to undermine the younger female that you've hired and the younger female is never going to ask for a raise because her time and efforts are going to be consumed with trying to remove your current secretary from power so the both of them are going to work extra hours do extra work they're going to have your back all over the damn place in the hopes that something like Game of Thrones, they can knock off the other one. And for the fellas out there, if you work for a small or mid-sized business that has secretaries, you see, well, I know in the internet world, you might not have seen as much, but for those of us who come from the standard office workplace environment, that's the way the game is played. When you have secretaries, you pit them against each other. Oh, they need to be competent and they need to be intelligent, but you also need to make clear that everybody knows that at any moment you could replace them, that they are standing next to their replacement every day. So all that Kamala Harris has done is for this Elizabeth Alexander chick, the, the one who's got the real position. For Kate Bedingfield and Jen Psaki, you know, the ones who have the real positions of power, the ones who actually have real positions, they put the black women up under them to let them know, if you get out of line, we've already got your replacement hired. And it'll look real good. We've already got some black women up under you, so... If you get out of line, we'll, we can fire you and there will be no political fall, no political fallout because you can't say that it was, that we didn't replace you with another woman. And not only have we set the field to replace you with a woman, but she's a black too. So it'll be a double whammy. Nobody, we can fire you and nobody can touch us because we hired Simone Sanders and, and Jean Kareen, whatever the hell her name is, uh, Kareen Jean Pierre, we hired them from day one. Your minority replacements are already sitting in the chair next to you. So if you try that feminist thing, understand Simone Sanders, baby, you think you're going to play feminist against me? Simone Sanders is my guard dog. There's nothing. Simone Sanders is willing to risk life and limb just to get in the room. Simone, I, I can fire you. I can fire you, Kate. I can fire you, Jenny. I can fire you, Elizabeth. I can fire you. And Simone Sanders will walk out there that afternoon. They can, she can walk out there this afternoon and she is going to tell everybody that I am the best damn thing since frozen yogurt. She will say Joe Biden don't have a sexist bone in his body. Joe Biden loves women, blacks, teddy bears, frogs. He loves everybody. Now, how are you going to fight that? 
Joe Biden put his Negro bed winches in place so that they can run interference. If the white women get out of line, he's already set the table to replace them. To replace them with some minority females who gonna have his back 100%. So the black women are so desperate that they're not going to say nothing because they want those senior positions that they were denied. And the white women ain't going to say nothing because they're scared of losing their positions to those, to their black underlings. People, it's a cold ass game is what I'm trying to tell you. It's a cold ass game. And if you all don't understand, they're not playing checkers. They're playing chess against the very people they hired. They've already made sure that if you start bad mouthing them, they've got credible replacements waiting in the wings. And Kamala Harris put this on her Twitter. When's the last time you saw an administration put this on Twitter like this? First of all, let's be very, very clear. Kamala Harris is setting herself up as the queen bee. And she's letting all the other women, including Nancy Pelosi, know I'm the queen bee now. I run this thing now. And she's letting all the women under her know y'all are here as long as I say you are. And oh yeah, they put Simone Sanders. They didn't put her under Joe Biden. So Joe Biden if they get rid of Simone Sanders, it won't be Joe Biden who does it. People, do y'all see how cold this is? If they fire Simone Sanders, remember, she doesn't even work for Joe Biden. She works for Kamala Harris. People, they got everybody here in a trick bag. Everybody here is in a lockbox. Everybody here is trapped in a position where even if they do attempt to go into revolt, they've got their bases covered. You can't say that Joe Biden, the racist old white man, got rid of Simone Sanders because she doesn't even work for Biden. She works for Kamala Harris. So if Joe Biden says dump her ass, the age, the South Asian vice president who masquerades as a black female is going to be the one who swings the axe and takes off Simone Sanders' head. People, y'all need the black media to explain this to you because Roland Martin is so busy trying to get a position under these people that he'll never say what I just said. All the black women who are so easily impressed by what you're seeing right now, man, this whole thing is rigged. This whole thing is rigged so they can get rid of Simone Sanders and Karine Jean-Pierre and not a wink will be said. But then again, they don't have to get rid of them. They don't have to get rid of them. They won't have to do that. They won't have to do that because Simone Sanders isn't going to give a peep of trouble. She's never operated this high before. She doesn't work for a campaign anymore. She now actually works for an elected official. So she ain't going to say nothing. She's going to sit back in the cut. She's going to observe and wait to see if an opening presents itself and see if she can move in then. You didn't hear anybody else connect the dots the way you heard here tonight. And understand, they haven't even made it. They, they haven't even actually taken the oath of office yet which means they already knew how they were going to do this. They got Joe Biden now has the white women under control and he has the black females under control. There are no black men of any consequence involved in the process anywhere. The white guys run it again. I, I would like to take a moment now to just ask for all the people who said that things were going to be different now for all the people who said that they wanted to get rid of 
Donald Trump because he was too racist. They wanted to get rid of Donald Trump because he was no good for black people. For all the folks who said that, I really only have one question for you here now. Tell me, now that we've explained it to you here properly so that you understand that all the pieces have been put into place, everything that we told you was going to happen is occurring exactly the way that we said. Exactly what were you voting for again? Remind us one more time exactly what it was because you told us that this was going to be the end of the white male hierarchy and that we were going to get rid of the white supremacists. That's what you said. That's what you said. You said that was going to be the case and yet that hasn't occurred. Why not? Why not? And your old black media never explained this. The dead black media never explained this. It had to be explained now. People tell me what changed. Somebody explain to me exactly what changed. I don't see what changed. I don't. I don't. Maybe you can explain it to me then. And you tell me exactly what changed. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a very brief commercial, non-commercial break. When we come back, we are going to discuss more about the token positions of power. Now, so many people have been fooled. Before we do that, of course, I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program. Um, I thank, definitely want to thank our friends over there at Whitfield. Thank you very much. Um, that was a very uh, generous thing that you've done here today. We appreciate that. As well as Gladys. You know, we got to have a Gladys out here helping hold it down for us. My man Chadwick, David, and everybody else who has contributed. Andrew, thank you very much again. When we come back, we are going to discuss about the token positions of power, how so many people got themselves fooled, how we predicted this is exactly the way it would come down. They were not fighting to remove white supremacy. They were just fighting to reorganize it. And for the idiots and the gullible fools who helped enable them, they showed how big of an ass you are. This is the Black Channel. Black leader. He isn't chasing fame. He doesn't crave white acceptance nor smile pleasantly for his enemies. Instead, he silently watches them. He is faceless. He is everywhere. He is black first. His name is Occam Jeffers, a ruthless counter-racist hitman. Occam Jeffers has been assigned a mission to eliminate murderous cops. Will he obtain justice for the subjugated black citizens of New Orleans? Or will white violence once again reign supreme? Find out in the upcoming novel, War of the Heart. Available everywhere books are sold on December 1st. Visit spiritof1811publishing.com. Our story, our family. This is the Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. Very glad to be with you all here this evening. We're discussing the token positions of power. And now that the Biden White House is moving into position and taking the reins they are exposing to everyone that this is exactly what the game was so many people were sitting up here talking as if things were about to change that they had somehow been smarter than we here in the black media that they understood something that we didn't understand and man you didn't even make it out the damn gate before they gave you the business you didn't even make it out of the gate they grabbed their tokens they set it up and said oh well there we go Oh, well, there we go. Nothing else required. Now, I mean, understand something. You don't even have a position of faux authority. None of these positions up here, not a single one, is a position of authority. Do you understand that? 
there's nobody up on that screen who actually has any real authority. Do you understand that? Nobody up here has any real authority. Nobody up here can fire anyone. Hell, they don't even have a gopher. They are the gophers. They don't even have a gopher, people. Do you understand that? They are the damn gophers. They are the ones who go fetch the coffee. They are the ones who go take out the trash. They are the ones who go run the errands. They are the ones who go pick up the croissants. They are the ones who go get the donuts from Krispy Kreme. They are the gophers. You're looking at all your gophers up there on your screen now. And of course, the black women are the lowest ones on the totem pole. Kamala Harris is going to say, get my coffee. The white White House communications director is going to say, go get my coffee to the press secretary. The press secretary is going to say, go get my coffee to Simone Sanders and Simone Sanders is going to start walking down the street. Is that just me saying it? Are those my words? Is someone going to tell me that being the deputy, principal deputy vice presidential secretary, that that's a position of power? Is that what you're about to try to do? Are you about to try that one? Who here is going to try to say that there's a power position on this screen? Which one of you out there who supported Biden and Harris, one of you Roland Martin viewers, which one of y'all is going to try to say there's a power position on this screen? Who's going to try to say that? Which one of you is going to attempt to pass off that fraud that there's a power position sitting up here and the rest of us just don't get it? No, they piled all of their, quote, women and minorities into their throwaway token positions. That's where they piled all of them. They piled them up over there and then told you that because we had this big announcement on Twitter, you're supposed to sit here and say that this was some this was a really big boss move is what you're supposed to be saying. Is somebody in the chat room talking about his cabinet's not complete? The communications cabinet is. It's gonna get real pathetic out there. You got some folks still holding out hope. See, that's more of that just you wait now. Just you wait. Some of you lead pipe babies, you all really need to go get chemotherapy or something. You lead pipe babies. Jason, you wrong. I mean, yeah, that's the communication positions. But, yeah, he, he, he gonna watch. He gonna do some big things for us. He ain't filled out the cabinet yet. Yes, he has. Hell, y'all, then you weren't listening to when Biden made his other picks. No, Jason, just you wait. He, you just wait now. He gonna do some big things later. You just wait. He ain't done yet now. You just, just got to wait. The man ain't even it over yet. Just wait there. He gonna get some things going. You just wait. He gonna get some things going now. You need to wait. They always say you need to wait to black folk. Now they got brain dead Negroes talking about you need to wait to each other. 16 years after Obama got into office, you still got some ignorant folk out here talking about, you need to wait now. Four years after he left office, you need to wait. Three weeks after the election, you need to wait now. You need to be patient now. Just, just wait. Wait for how long? However long it take. So what if it takes two years? You got to wait. And what if it takes two decades? You got to wait. And what if it takes 200 more years? You got to wait. Just you wait now. 
So you have to understand there is a contingent in black society that no amount of abuse bothers them. No amount of discomfort hurts them. They have been crawling on their bellies for so long that they're willing to accept that. So now they're back with that same old Obama mess they were talking. You need to wait now. You got to be patient. Don't, don't be trying to run this thing now. Biden, Biden going to pull a trick now. You got to see. You got to wait and see. Some of y'all are just some, you got a bunch of Uncle Rufuses and then you got some young Rufuses. Not as many as there used to be, but boy, I'm telling you. People, these are token positions. They're not going to put any serious black people in a position where they could actually, you know, make them look bad. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. So, yeah, if you want to know why it is that Simone Sanders sold her damn soul, if you want to know why it is, by the way, she got what she wanted. She's going to go back to her alumni. Oh, she's going to go back to the sorority and the alumni and tell all of them, if you work hard, put your life on the line, kiss every pair of white butt cheeks that wiggle through the dough, then you too can become chief, um, senior advisor and chief spokesperson for the vice president. You did all that ass kissing and didn't even get a job under the actual president. You had to get under the vice president. And not only that, it's the most expendable job under the vice president. I'll be damned. She went through all that work, all that humiliation, and all she got to show for it is this t-shirt. But people, do you see how hard she fought for it? She is just one among many. There's a whole bunch of these bought and paid for token Negroes chomping at the bit to sell the rest of us out. Chomping at the bit to sell the rest of us down the river. And they ain't even selling us down the river for big money or a powerful position. They're selling us down the river for some footnote in the White House guest book. They're selling black people down the river so that they can be mentioned at the bottom of one of the programs and one of the White House dinners. They're selling black folk down the river so that they can have a job and maybe show up on TV a couple of times and that's it. People, how many times does the chief spokesperson to the vice president show up on TV? Can someone tell me if you've ever seen the chief spokesperson for the vice president ever show up on television anywhere? Have you ever seen that anywhere? I'm trying to get you to understand that when I when I bang on the, the dead black media and the old black media, I do it for a reason. I do it because you don't understand how long they've been waiting in the wings, how long they've been laying in the cut, and how cheaply and easily and happily they will sell all of us down the river for a token ass position. For some little old penny in the ass bull jive token position so that they can try to go get another job somewhere else. They fought this hard just to get a job so that hopefully they can use the position to go get another job somewhere else. And this is where it's at. This is what we're dealing with. And over there, at, if you want to know what the real deal is, Shea Butter Twitter is, the real deal with Shea Butter Twitter is those are a one, bunch of Simone Sanders wannabes. These are a bunch of unpaid, uncompensated, uncelebrated, unknown flunkies and lackeys furiously typing away at their keyboards, not getting paid, 
in between their job at Starbucks, hoping that at some point they can be picked up for a press secretary position on somebody's campaign. And then hopefully parlay that into an actual position under an elected official. In the chat room, you're correct. They are perpetual interns. They're not just interns. They are perpetual interns. They are perpetual interns. Ebony Magazine, what's left of it, employs nothing but a bunch of perpetual interns. Jamila Lemieux is a perpetual intern. Simone Sanders was a perpetual intern before this week, apparently. She was a perpetual intern, a perpetual gopher. And they're trying to sell all of us on the idea that the best black folks should be searching for. They're grabbing all their perpetual interns to come back here to the neighborhood and attempt to sell all of us on the idea that we too need to acknowledge and settle for being perpetual interns. I just wanted you all to see how it came down. I just wanted you all to see how it came about. They didn't actually get anything of any consequence. They didn't actually get anything of any value. They're in exactly the same subservient position that they've been in. That they were window dressing before. Now they're being used as window dressing again. There's nothing more to it, but the real thing is to understand they've been fighting against us. Their job has been to fight against us, and this is what they were fighting for. They were fighting for a token position. Now be damned. They sold out black society to have a third stringer riding the bench position. Not even one of any real consequence. Simone Sanders will not be on TV. Kareem Jean-Pierre is not going to be on television. This tweet on Twitter from Kamala Harris is the last time you're going to hear from either one of them. It's the last time either one of them is going to show up somewhere. But it was worth it to them. It was worth it to them because they're taking a look at it and saying, well... Good enough for me. Good enough for me. If the rest of you don't get anything, that's great. Good enough for me. Your HBCUs are filled with people who are waiting in the wings. That's why the Democrats love going to the HBCUs. They've got student alumni presidents and uh, student activists like Simone Sanders. Remember that picture I showed y'all? Bill Clinton recruited her little ass from way back in the day. He recruited her from way back in the day. She been kissing ass for a position since way back in the day. She been waiting on this moment for a couple of decades now. And now it's finally here. So when you sit there at your HBCUs and so many of them are sitting there with their degrees, understand the way that they see things. The way that they see things is all they have, they're, they're going to get into a prestigious enough position to get recognized or noticed by one of the white candidates. And that that'll be all they need to do. All they need to do is to get in position and that's it. All they have to do is just wait to get into position and that'll be all. How many of you voted for Biden and Harris because these were the power positions you had in mind? 
Hell, how many people voted for Biden and Harris expecting any power whatsoever? I mean, any whatsoever. I would say at some point you stop letting people treat you like an ass. I would say at some point you do that. But there are not enough there are not enough people who are kissing these folks' asses to understand that. And they're not ashamed. You know why? Because these individuals have lived their lives doing that at the HBCUs. Can I just be totally honest? Can my people at the HBCUs? Can I just can I have church for a minute? Can I have church for a minute? Every one of you knows at least 10 Simone Sanders at Spellman, Morehouse, Fisk, Brown. Every one of you knows them. There's, there's at least a dozen at every HBCU jockeying to be student council president. There's at least a dozen of them sitting there waiting. You got to figure out some kind of way to get around them. There's at least a dozen of them sitting. Hell, as Spellman is half the student body. Sitting here telling you about their degree. Telling you about how great it's going to be. Showing up at these campaign rallies. Hampton University. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter which one you name. Everywhere you go. You all tell me that I'm wrong about that. For my folks at the HBCUs, you tell me that I'm in error about what I'm saying. You tell me that I'm in error about what I'm saying and that, that this is not what they do at those places. You tell me that it's one bit different. It's like Lord of the Damn Flies. They sit around in their little groups. They plot and they scheme and they want to show everybody just how smart they are. How capable they are. How willing to slit everybody else's throats they are. They're willing to show everybody just how willing to do in everybody else that they can be. That's the whole point of it. I bring this up to you because I want you to understand the magnitude of this. It's not just one or two people. We're not going to be just dealing with this in this election cycle. I told you all years ago that they were cultivating individuals for the purposes of having a crop of new bootlicks who were one day going to do their bidding. That crop is coming of age. That crop has just about matured. And I want you to see that you're probably getting paid more at your job than they're getting paid at theirs. At this point right now, they have sold their souls to the game and they don't have a choice. Roland Martin sold his soul to the game. He's got no credibility among black people. He's got to keep riding this thing until he gets there. He doesn't have a choice. He doesn't have a choice. He's got to keep going until he makes this thing happen. He's got to keep going. And now that he hasn't gotten one of those positions, I told you all, now that he hasn't gotten one of those positions that he wanted, now he's going to have to fight like hell. He's going to have to fight like hell now to try to make the Democrats scared. That's what he's going to try to do. He's going to try now to make the Democrats scared, make them afraid. If you don't, if you don't let me in on the briefings, remember the only time that Roland Martin got buck with anybody was when Kamala Harris got knocked out of the race. Roland was riding for her, by the way. He was riding for her the whole time until she got knocked out of the race. And then Roland was like, uh, you know, if, if her campaign spokesperson had contacted me, if they had done an interview with me, we could have helped spare them this. They tried to do it without me. 
And if they had just understood that they couldn't get it done without me, remember that? That was the only time that Roland ever talked back to them was when they denied him an interview. Now he's going to try to play it from the backside and say, okay, well, they didn't let me in the front door. Let me see if I can get them to let me in another way. If you all don't do my bidding, then I might just end up on YouTube banging on you every day. Get ready for Roland Martin to start sounding like the new black media. Hell, get ready for him to start calling himself the new black media if since they haven't given him what he wanted. Not what he really wanted. They didn't give that to him, so just look for Roland to sit up here and start really getting real buck and really start trying to bang on people. Just understand, he was he put all of his eggs in this basket waiting for this to happen, and it didn't occur. So just be aware, now he doesn't have a choice. He's going to have to go for it. He's going to have to go for it is what he's going to have to do. A whole bunch of these people who didn't get what they wanted, they're going to start trying to sound like us now. Just understand, they're going to start trying to sound like us now. That's the game that they play when they can't get the little nigger trinkets that they want. Then they sit up here and start trying to bang on us is what they try to do. When they can't get the little rewards that they want, then they think they're going to play bad cop. Problem, you don't have credibility to be able to do that. It's not going to work for you the way you tell yourself that it will. It's not going to work that way for you. You can daydream about it, but it's not really going to work for you the way you tell yourself it will. That's not really what's going to happen. You're going to march yourself back over here, and it's going to sound different. You're going to try to march yourself back over here, and it's not going to sound the way you told yourself it would. In your head, the way it plays out is, well, nobody's going to know and nobody's really going to remember. That's the way it plays out in your head. I'm here to tell you, in reality, that is not the way that it's going to play out. It doesn't play out that way in the real world. In the real world, people have memories. In the real world, their memories are long. In the real world, you're going to have to earn what you get. And you got a track record that you wouldn't really want anybody to remind themselves of. You don't really want people to remind themselves about this, Roland. You don't really want to have to do that. The time for you to be talking against Kamala Harris was when Kamala Harris said, Am I going to do something just for black people? No! That was the time for you to be speaking against her, Roland. Nobody's going to recognize you jumping up at the last damn second, talking about it later. Nobody's going to recognize you. Nobody's going to care what you're talking about there. That's not the way it's going to work. There are going to be a whole bunch of people who are going to try to do this Johnny Come Lately thing later after they can't get what it is that they wanted. They won't be the only ones. Ben Jones, Michael Eric Dyson, uh, Mark Lamont Hill. He's probably the worst offender. Mark Lamont Hill's probably the worst. This nigga been jockeying for a TV host position now for a damn decade. And his ship never came in. His ship never came through. He's been waiting forever for that to happen. And it never did. He's been waiting for a decade now for that to come in. Van Jones too. All of them been sitting back waiting forever for somebody to give them the call. And they were going to get boosted up to the next level. Now that none of them got what they wanted, I wonder how many of them are going to turn. Not a lot. It's not going to be a lot. Don't look for some mass uprising, you see, because that would take principles. That would take principle and character for that kind of thing to occur. And since they don't actually have principles or character, don't look for that to happen. That's not really what's going to happen. These people ain't built like that. 
they're not built to sit up here and 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 respond in that way so don't look for them to do that but i just want you to understand and be aware that there's a whole bunch of them who feel some kind of way right now i'm pretty sure even little old damn near if he roland martin i know he feels some kind of way about this i know he feels some kind of way about the fact that nobody gave him the call nobody gave him the nod nobody called him up and said hey let's see if you can go to work for us nobody did that and remember he was trying to market himself as the biggest voice out there and whatnot. That's what it was supposed to be. He was just certain that somebody was going to do that. Somebody was supposed to open that door. Now that he didn't get it, how do you think he's going to respond? Now that he didn't get what it was that he wanted, I wonder how he's going to respond now. Is he still going to carry the water or is he going to start sniping at them and letting them know that he feels some kind of way about that? I wonder. I wonder how many of them are going to do that now. I wonder how many of the females who didn't get what they want. What's her name? April, whatever her face is. All them folks who were sitting there in the White House press corps. How many of those women, how many of those black women are going to feel some kind of way about it? I wonder how many of them are really going to sit there and big up Simone Sanders. How many of them are happy to see her having that? I wonder how many of them are going to be genuinely happy and genuinely glad about that and okay with it. How many of them? That's a simple question to ask. We're talking about token positions tonight. We're talking about token positions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the telephone lines here. And if you are a Biden Harris supporter, if you feel like these are, if you feel like what you see on your screen is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris keeping their word or Joe Biden and Kamala Harris doing something for black people. If you all think that hiring Simone Sanders and Corrine Jean-Pierre is doing something for black people, go ahead and call us up and tell us. Tell us that this is what we were waiting for. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the black media. This is your opportunity to weigh in and go ahead and tell everybody that this is fulfilling the promise. That this is what black folk been waiting for. This will be your opportunity to go ahead and do that now. Let me get a caller from area code 563. You're on live with the black channel. What's your name? Where you're calling from? My name is Angela calling from Chicago. Hi. Angela, you're talking down in your shoes. Wake up now. What's on your mind? Can you hear me now? Yes. What is your, what, what's on your mind, dear? So I'm calling because I wanted to just let you know that I appreciate you and that I like everything that you're doing. I actually love everything that you're doing. That's all. Well, thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Angela, please do give us a call again. Let me get a call of Mary Code 803. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you coming from? Okay, he's breaking into a pawn shop. Let me get a call of Mary Code 646. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's up, Jason? This is Sosa calling from the Bronx, New York. All right, brother. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, um, all this bug dancing and this is the reward that they got. Um, but uh, I guess fortunately for Simone that there's a there's a few linebacker positions for the Oakland Raiders. I hear their their players are out with the COVID. So yeah, um, yeah. So I guess you get a uh, take take one of those jobs. Well, it'll definitely pay a hell of a lot more than she's getting right now. That's the cruel irony of it. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get 
Caller from area code 469, you're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Thomas calling from Dallas. Thomas from Dallas, what's on your mind? Yeah, Jason, this is a prime example of uh, playing the fool. This is like the the help part two. That's what they signed up for. If this was the plantation, they would be foot warmers. You know, Negro, get down there and warm my feet up. That's what those positions are. And it's, it's grimy and it's slimy and it's evil. But, hey, that's what they signed up for, so that's what they get. Brother, I will, go, any black I will go even further than that. I'm going to say something right now that's going to get me in so much trouble. I'm going to say something that's <laughs> going to get me in so much trouble, but so be it. I want to know to my brothers and sisters who actually live in, or most of y'all can't live in it, but frequent the Capital District. Because as you all know, I've been to D.C. many times. I've had to film in D.C. many times. I know what it's like to drive into D.C. at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. I know what it's like to get on 495. Uh, at 4 in the morning. I know what it's like to go on all of those 95s going through there. In the wee hours of the morning, right up until the sun comes up. When you first start seeing the plane start to take off from Reagan Airport. I also know what it's like at that parking garage that's right across up the street from the White House. On D Street, I think it is. Um, I know what it's like to be going there early in the morning. I know what it's like to see the women. Oh, I'm, I'm about to get into so much trouble right now. Let me just go ahead and get in trouble then. I know what it's like to see the women come walking out of the parking lot early in the morning. I know what it's like to see them come making their way, pulling their rolling luggage and whatnot to the White House, to the Capitol building. I know what it's like to see them going to the Senate offices near the Capitol building with their very nice pencil skirts and their black high heels mm -hmm. and their designer frame glasses. You know, it kind of reminds me of another young intern, another young wannabe fresh out of an HBCU and she couldn't make no traction for herself. So she put on her pencil skirt. I'm about to get into trouble here. She put on her pencil skirt. And she put on her designer glasses. And she put on her black designer heels. And she started hustling them draws and making it do what it do. I'm about to, okay, my channel's about to get hit. My channel's about to get hit. I, my channel's about to get hit. I, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I should have just left that alone. My channel's about to get hit. But what I will say here is that it's not, mere, it's not nearly as offensive for some of these people as we might tell ourselves it is. As a matter of fact, a number of them made up their minds a while ago that this was just the way they was going to have to do things, that this was just going to be it. Um, am I, I guess I'm just going to get into trouble, but I will just tell you all before they cut the feed to my channel here in the next couple of minutes. If you don't believe me, just ask anybody who lives in D.C. and or works in the Capital District, any of y'all who work as security guards in the Capital District Police, any of y'all who work at the parking garages, they got some black folk who work there, any of y'all who hand, some of those black folk handing out those flyers and stuff for the tourists in front of the White House, if y'all get out there early in the morning when you see the homeless dudes, the homeless dudes sleeping on those uh, vents, those grates, in the sidewalk trying to stay warm early in the mornings if you've seen that by the way anybody who's actually been there and seen that y'all let me know you let me know if I'm lying you call me out on it I sat there many a morning and watched young female after young female by the way of every race every ethnicity marching themselves up the steps 
to the Capitol building or around the back, which is where most of them would go because you don't have to go up steps, marching their way up the steps to the Supreme Court building, marching their way up to the White House, marching their way up to the Senate offices. By the way, I've been seeing that for years now, for years. And at this point, they are so married to the damn game, they could rationalize performing any act to get to the next level. And let's just be very clear, Monica Lewinsky thought that she was negotiating for a White House position in Bill Clinton's office. Mm. That's what she thought she was doing. Then when she realized that she wasn't negotiating for nothing but to come back next week and do it all over again, that's when all of a sudden she wanted to start flapping her gums in a different way. Understand how the game is played. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight, Thomas. Let me get a caller from area code 412. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Caller from area code 412 is watching TV. Caller from area code 510, you're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Marcus calling out of San Francisco. <clears throat> Marcus out of San Francisco, what's on your mind? Yeah, I just wanted to call in, and I'm kind of confused with some of the points you make sometimes. You always say that black people need tangible... Okay, get closer to your phone, to dude. I don't know if you're on speaker or what, but get closer to your phone. That's not going to work. Well, I'm just saying, you you always say that black people need tangibles and, you know, no tangibles, no vote. But I'm wondering, you know, what tangibles do black people actually need? I mean, from my perspective, black people can pretty much do and or achieve anything right now in 2020 that they want to achieve. And I don't really believe that the government owes us as a community really anything okay can black um, people achieve getting the court system to not falsely accuse you of a crime can have black people how are black people going to achieve that on their own well but don't you think that's sort of on a case okay sir sir simple sir simple question how do black you said black people can achieve anything they want to right now without the government answer the question how do black people get the government to not falsely accuse them of a crime well, if, if a black person is being falsely accused of a crime, wouldn't you say that that is the okay, fault sir, of the person sir, accusing Okay, sir, 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 the, the way you deal with this is not to ask a question. When you have to ask a question, what you're conceding is, oh, hell, I'm dumb and I, I made a stupid statement. So you've done it twice now. If you could, you would just answer the question. You said we could do it on our own. Explain how do we do that on our own third time. Okay, so, okay, so Nate, okay, well, First of all, if a black person is being accused or falsely accused of a crime, you know, that's not the system's fault. That's not the United States fault. That's a case by case. OK, sir, you know, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone now. You're done. He just told us that if the United States accuses you falsely of a crime, that's not the United States' fault. No, you don't have to be stupid to talk like that, but it sure does help. Caller from Mary Code 202, you're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, hey, Mr. Jason Black, man. It's uh, Mr. Buckles, man, from D.C. How you doing? Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there, but let me get a caller from area code 985. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, Jason. My name is Cassandra. Hello, Cassandra. Where are you I'm calling, calling from? I'm calling from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Cassandra from Baton Rouge. What's uh, on Baton your Rouge, mind? Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, I, I, I actually wanted to talk about something else, but I want to address the caller, uh, the educated Negro who just called in, stating that uh, black people can do things on their own. Uh, education is great, sir, but um, 
there's every other group has been given economic hand up to achieve the things that they have achieved. So why are we responsible for achieving these things without those hand ups? That's all I want to say. Well, thank you for taking my call. Yeah, it's not so much though that other groups have been given economic handouts. It is that we as black people have had obstacles erected in our way. There is no equivalent yes. to chattel slavery for any other group of people. There is no equivalent to the great betrayal for any other people. There is no equivalent to reconstruction for any other people. There is no equivalent to the bombings of the Black Wall Streets for any other people. And take a look at how long, how massive, how devastating, how widespread, and how long this list is getting. There is no, I'm I'm gonna keep going. There is no equivalent to segregation for any other group of people. There is no equivalent to Jim Crow for any other people. There is no equivalent for lynching for any other people. There is no equivalent for police brutality for any other people. There is no equivalent to the war on drugs for any other people. There is no equivalent to the prison industrial complex for any other people. There is no equivalent for gentrification for any other people. There is no equivalent to the devastation of the Highway Act for any other people. We can go down this list that encompasses the entirety of American history and all of its economy. Nobody else has had had, has been systematically targeted for oppression and devastation the way that we have across the board. The Highway Act wasn't just used yeah. against three black folk in Oklahoma. It was used against every single black neighborhood in every single city and every single state that has a sizable black population everywhere. Nobody targeted Chinatown for a freeway. Nobody targeted Greek Not town that, Jason, for a freeway. When, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Nobody, when, nobody the targeted the Vietnamese. The were- okay, slow down, Cassandra. Nobody targeted the Vietnamese in New Orleans for a freeway. Nobody targeted any of these people the way that they have us. So beyond just these other people got handouts, the issue is that black people get things popping on our own. And then next thing you know, somebody's kicking in the door trying to take everybody to prison. I'll let you have the last word. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you for that. Uh, Just to highlight what you said, something about the Chinese, even when they are done wrongly uh, by people or government, they always try to make it right. With the COVID situation, when the Chinese businesses were suffering, these senators were trying to get laws to get these people money and not loans like grants. That person is severely misinformed, but thank you for taking my call. I I hope you have a great night. He's he's most likely he's a San Francisco coon. You know how it is. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Some of these dudes out there, they're so desperate. You know, they're so brainwashed and desperate and whatnot. They call up with the black folk. Hey, all this black talk is making my girlfriend nervous. She wants to know how many of y'all there are out there. I see your YouTube channel has over 100,000 subscribers. You got my Asian girlfriend a little nervous about how many of y'all are out there. She looking at me sideways. More, more sideways than usual and when she calls me nigga in bed you know and now I feel like she means it when she says it so we really need to talk y'all down from what you're doing caller from area code 240 you're on live with the black channel what's your name where you're calling from this is Kamala calling from the great city Shreveport Louisiana home of the Cooper Road what's going on Jason alright brother hopefully we do better this time than we did last time what's on your mind I have a feeling that in order for us to get ahead in life, we're going to actually actually start slaughtering black people because the ones that don't want to get on code, we have no use for them. I got into an argument recently this past weekend because I called Obama a mulatto scum. And I was getting called a coon because as a black man, I'm not supposed to be uh, critical of Obama. But after I kept giving out fact after fact about Obama and the birth of Kamala Harris, I stopped being you know labeled as the ultimate coon. And I just came to this conclusion that we're going to stop pulling the Harry Tubman on these boys. Once you start moving out that plantation, people don't want to go back. You're going to stop putting heads in the dirt. Well, definitely, as yeah. black folk here, don't let anybody try to get the gut jump on you about being a coon. The real situation there is a coon is somebody who supports white supremacist power and nobody did that more than Obama. All you got to do is bring up the police and say, okay, if you defend Obama, what about all the cops that he let go for killing black folk? Sounds like the coon is you. 
Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get caller from area code 443. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, peace, fam. This is uh, Khalid from uh, Baltimore. What's Baltimore? Khalid from Baltimore. What's on your mind? Uh, not necessarily a, a question, but basically I, I wanted to uh, throw something at you. Um, because of the media, yeah, the new me- the new black media, y'all have a, a pretty good following. And my thought was, why don't y'all uh, like organize? As okay, far as brother, here's that- here's the problem. Anybody who calls me up and says, "Hey, the new black media, y'all sound like y'all pretty big there." What y'all <laughs> need to do is, brother, you live in Baltimore. You didn't even you need hear, you didn't sir, hear me out. You, didn't, you live in Baltimore. You you what you need I to know, do in Baltimore no, is I'm you not, need to be doing gonna something, ask you, not asking us. Mr. Black, <laughs> yo, this was, I was going to ask you, would it be smart for, like, all of y'all, like, I'm not saying, like, uh, as far as to organize the votes, as far, as far as what I basically, the example is, um, you can control, you are like, say stuttering I, I, and stammering listen, and blubbering. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen, 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 Sir, listen I don't have saying. to, excuse me. I don't have to listen to a damn thing you have to say, blubbering I'm, I'm, and stammering I'm, the way you are. Don't you dare come on my program trying to tell me what I have to do. I don't have to do anything. I didn't say, damn, okay. First thing we're going to get straight say, like, is I don't have to do anything for somebody start, blubbering and no, stammering say, on I, my I, phone. God damn, can you just, why you always try to You sound like you're drunk. You sound like you are drunk. On my phone. If people wanted to vote, if people wanted to vote, Mr. Black, say for example. I don't uh, need an example. What Biden. is your question and you have five seconds to get to it or I'm cutting your line? You know what? Uh, cut my line, man. Have a good one. Caller from area code 919. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you're calling from? Hello? Yes, put the pipe down. You're on live. What's your name? Where you're calling from? Hello? All the crack babies got up here tonight. I guess after the Tyson Jones fight, they're all still trying to shake off that inebriated, intoxicated stupor. They getting on the phone and calling me. Hey, Jaden, are you there? Hello? Oh, am I on? Hello? You there? Caller from Mary Code 412. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you're calling from? All the Biden Harris supporters are checking in here tonight. Let me see if I can help them out a little bit. Caller from area code 412, exchange 235. You're on live with the Black Channel. All right. If anyone is able to find the caller from area code 412-235-8972, apparently they have been abducted and are unable to answer their phone properly. But 412 412- Two three five eight nine seven two is called in. We're not sure what they're doing. It sounds like they're in the trunk of a car. Let me see if there's anyone else who needs assistance. Caller from area code six seven eight. You're on live with the Black Channel. Would you like some help? Nope. I'm good, man. Jason was good. It's the kid James from Plainfield, New Jersey. James from yeah. Plainsfield. What's on your mind? Hey, man, you already know, man. I want to first off say shout out to you, V1. Shout out to the people in the chat that's woke. And, you know, fuck these crackers. Fuck these cracker mulattoes like Obama. Fuck these crackers, biracial mulattoes, light-skinned people that I like to brag about having white in them. Fuck these cracker Arabs that claim it from Africa. Fuck these cracker Asians. Fuck these cracker Indians. Fuck these crackers. And, you know, they lucky they didn't come across brothers like me. I don't even want the reparation money anymore that they owe us and that we deserve. At this point, I want they orange blood leaking on the ground. And no disrespect to my ancestors and my, my the most high, the powers that be in the universe, 
But I don't even feel like they on my type of time, Jason. So, you know, these crackers is lucky they backed up militarily. And black women lucky that these crackers that's backed up militarily is backing them up. Because, you know, it's a matter of time. These crackers and these cracker lovers going to feel the wrath of this 29-year-old black man straight from playing from New Jersey. B1. B1. In case you were wondering, his album is due to drop February 13th. Coming to Amazon, iTunes. The video will be premiering on YouTube in about a month. Caller from Mary Code 773, you're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you're calling from? Yo, this Woods, man, from uh, Abilene, Kansas. Woods from Abilene, Kansas. What's on your mind? Well, first off, bro, man, I want to say you that nigga, man. Like, you know what I mean? I really fucks with you, dog, and everything you do. But when it comes to these these folks out here, man, holding Obama nuts, listen, man, how do you explain the fact that this dude did absolutely nothing when it came to all of these black murders at the hands of these white supremacist cops? And you made a very good point last night, brother. Uh, if anybody in the fucking country could have done something about it, he did nothing as the president to protect black people from these fucking clowns out here. So how how can you find it within yourself to support this dude in any way, shape, or form? And listen, I'm to the point, man, all these fools that went out here and voted for this clown-ass Biden, when this dude, you know, brought that prison reform back in 94, where he obviously put a target on black folks back. So I'm like, listen, man, maybe niggas need to get their lesson. Maybe niggas need to get what's coming to them. So you know what? Let him bring back that same reform from 94 and put targets on niggas' backs again. And all these criminals out here, these niggas out here running the streets doing all this, because a lot of them was the ones that voted for him, too. All of these well, niggas that just want to, you um, know, jump now, on the bandwagon. Well, let's, and, let's be clear. I mean, folks with felony records, the real problem is they can't vote for anybody, which was the point. The real thing that we have to understand is that Obama is a barometer. He is a measurement. He is a litmus test for how many black people are still emotionally and psychologically defeated. So it's actually good when he circles back around, when he slithers out of his hole, so that he lets us know and, and gets, gives us a head count of who is still defeated. That's the real thing we have to understand. But that, but we have to be same. willing to see the positive and the negative about it is what we need to be willing to do. That's important. Thank you very but much that, for giving us a call. Let me get a call of Mary Code 919. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Lee from Durham, North Carolina. Lee from Durham, North Carolina. What's on your mind? That. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, both parties have been in control for 400 plus years. So it's now just the time to take it up uh, a notch or two in terms of trying to hold the Democrats accountable for whatever they they call themselves to trying to do since they're now enlightened based off of the George Floyd. But uh, I think we've got to continue to put the heat on them. You know, it's not like we got our own party making major issues and changes so go in go in on their ass like you do anybody else and and start holding them accountable well let's be very very clear though i am not holding joe biden or kamala harris or barack obama accountable i'm not holding them accountable i'm holding black people accountable i'm holding black people who are off code accountable i'm holding black people who don't know accountable uh, the politicians are doing what they do the white supremacists are doing what they do. I can't really be angry with them in that sense because, I mean, how am I going to be angry with a snake for being a snake? My job is to recognize the snakes and get everybody on code with the fact that, hey, we don't fool with snakes. That's where we need to be. So as just to make my position clear and to clarify where I stand, I actually don't hold them to the fire. I don't actually hold them accountable. I hold the people who are out here caping for them those are the ones I hold accountable. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. 
let's be very clear here. There's a whole lot of folks looking really way dumb tonight. There's a whole lot of people who sold their souls and guaranteed everybody that it was going to be a new day. There's a whole bunch of folk out here who tried to tell you that, oh, they had the master plan and that the rest of us just didn't see what it was. Whole bunch of them sitting up there in D.C. waiting for their damn ship to come in. Whole bunch of them were waiting for things to change and man, change. Now they're all sitting there without a chair when the music stopped. A whole bunch of them put life and limb on the line and got nothing to show for it. And this is the way it goes. This is the way it goes. And this is good. Because there have not been enough abject lessons handed out yet to completely clean the arena of the refuse. So this is good. This is good. They're all going to sit around and try to tell you that being a deputy White House secretary is some position of power. And we're here to make sure that anybody who tries to stand up at this point gets laughed the hell out of the room. This is good. Didn't take very long for things to go bad for them. Not very long at all. And I predict that a whole bunch of these folks are going to be yelling and screaming here for a minute. A whole bunch of them are going to be yelling and screaming in a minute when nothing really quite goes the way that they were expecting it to. I suspect it's going to be a whole bunch of people out here yelling and hollering and screaming about what they didn't get. It's going to be some Negroes throwing some veiled threats. It's going to be some Negroes out here trying to shake their feminist card because they didn't get what they wanted. Going to be a number of folks out here Trying to figure out, oh man, how in the hell do we get this to go correctly? They made all kinds of promises to themselves. They were willing to do all of this themselves. Because they assured themselves that they were going to get something out of it. Now they cut them off at the knees. Gave you an expendable ass low level position that nobody cares about. Not going to be very much you can do to parlay that into anything didn't take very long for that to go bad at all and that's what you had coming to you the next four years is going to be hella rough you were working all this time pro bono you were doing all of this for free and now you've been informed that your unpaid uncompensated servitude will continue indefinitely. Oh well. If you are new here to the Black Channel, welcome to the Haven of Intelligent Black Thought. We do this every weekend, over 111,000 subscribers and rising. We are not a little thing. If you haven't clicked that red subscribe button, you need to do so now. Then click that yellow notification bell and stay up to date with us. YouTube does have us under a shadow ban, but with your help, we have been able to crack the 100,000 mark. We have become a force to be reckoned with. Whole lot of people are worried. We're going to give them a whole lot more to be worried about. If you haven't seen our groundbreaking, best-selling documentary work, Go to our website, blackchannelfilms.com. That is blackchannelfilms.com. And check out our documentary work, 7 a.m., Gentrified Ethnic Cleansing American Style. Our newest documentary, Race War, all available on Amazon, on DVD, and for streaming. Blackchannelfilms.com is the place. That's blackchannelfilms.com. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of the Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, Black is the future, and the future is uncompromising.